In this video, I'll show you how to implement a basic system to track your laptops in Jira service management and utilize them in service requests to add context and solve issues faster. This video is aimed at users just getting started with asset and configuration management in Jira service management. We'll cover how to import a CSV of your laptops into Jira service management, how to assign them to your employees, and how to create custom fields to attach your laptops to your Jira issues for extra context. You can then apply what we'll cover in this video to other areas of asset and configuration management. To start, I will open up Insight, the asset and configuration management functionality in Jira Service Management. It's here that we store our asset and configuration item data. You can make multiple asset repositories and configuration management databases called object schemas. And we can see a few have already been created. I'll go ahead and create a new one called IT Employee Assets, which is where we will store the laptop information. An object schema will contain the different types of objects you want to store. These could be laptops, servers, virtual machines, software applications, routers, anything you like. This one is currently empty, so I'll add a new object type and call it laptops. There's no limitation to what type of object you can store, it's all defined by you. Each object type is defined by the attributes you give it. Currently, laptop only has four default attributes, name, key, updated, and created. I'll add a few more attributes that align to the data I have stored in my CSV file. If I open that file up, you can see the information I want to import about my laptops. I need to make attributes in my laptop object type that match the columns I have here. So let's go back and start adding these attributes. I need to decide what type of data each attribute is, and the majority here are text, so I can leave them as default. A few are dates, so I've changed the data type there. I also need to add a status attribute too, which is a different data type. Here I can add the different statuses of my laptop so I can quickly see how they're operating. I'll have in use, in stock, damaged and retired, but I can have anything I like here. The owner attribute is also different. For this attribute, I want to link each of my laptops to an employee. I'm storing my employees as their own objects in another object schema. So I want to create a link between my laptop objects and my employee objects to define who owns what. We can see all my employees here in this object schema. Each employee object has useful information about them, such as their location, their manager, which is useful for auto routing approval requests, and their Jira user profile. This employee information was imported in just the same way as I'm going to import my laptops. Now, let's go back to my IT employee assets schema. To import my laptop list, I need to go to the import settings of my object schema. And now I can create a new import. I will give it a name, and keep the options as default. Then I will select the CSV file I want to import. Here I'm being asked if I want to create a predefined structure. I'm going to skip this step as I've already created my laptop object types and its attributes. But if I hadn't, I could click here and it would automatically make a new object type for me with all the attributes it finds in the file. On the right here, I will click to create an automatic mapping of the columns of my CSV file to the attributes of my object type. Then I will save this configuration. If I expand here, we can see how it has mapped the import. The data locator is the column in my CSV file, and we can see that it has been correctly mapped to my object attributes. The last thing for me to do to configure this import is to handle the owner attribute. To do this, I need to add an object mapping. I need to tell it to take the value in the CSV file and look for an object with the same name. If it finds one, it needs to add that object and create a link between the laptop and the employee. And I do this with this short line of IQL. Now that I've done that, I can run the import. We can see that it has run successfully, and if we go to the laptop object type, we can see it has been populated with 11 objects. We can see here a load of details about each, and we can see that the owners have been added and linked to the employees. 
Next up, it's time to use these objects in my issues. First, I will create a custom field. I want it to be of the type Insight Objects, and I'll call it Affected Laptops. I'll assign it to the request and instance screens in my relevant project. Next, I want to configure the custom field's context and default values. We can see here a lot of object specific details. If I click here, we can then fill in these details to say which objects should be available to select from this field. I'll choose the object schema as IT employee assets. And then next, I'm going to assign a filter scope, which says what objects to select from this schema. In my case, I want object type equals laptops. I could add more to say only include laptops with the status in use, for example, but in this case, we're keeping it simple. Then I'll add a filter issue scope. This option lets me filter the available objects in this custom field based on the values in other fields in the issue. This filtering can also happen based on the values of any fields above this custom field in the request form. As it is, this custom field would show all laptops to anyone making a request. Instead, I want it to only show the laptops that the reporter owns, which is much more user friendly. To do this, I add this filter issue scope like so. I'll also configure what attributes to show on any objects that are selected in this field. Now our configuration is complete. I'm not going to show how to add this to the request types in our project as it's just the same as configuring any other custom field. Instead, I'll switch straight over to the portal. Here we have our report broken hardware request form with the affected laptops custom field added to it. We can see that it is only letting me select one laptop. And if I change who we're requesting this issue on behalf of, I get a different laptop. I'll go ahead and create an example issue. And then switch to the agent view. We can see here that the laptop is attached to the issue. This is useful to give me more context on the laptop that is broken, but it's also useful for reporting on how many requests I'm getting about certain laptops, what types of requests I'm getting for them, etc. Now you have the basics of creating a useful laptop tracking system in Jira Service Management. You can add many more objects and create many more custom fields that suit your workflows. All of this, will help you speed up the resolution of your issues. For more inspiration on what you can do with asset and configuration management in Jira Service Management, check out some of our other videos in the description below.